I will, I will talk about the search of uh, electromagnetic counterpart of gravitational waves. Uh, within the, the Gravita team, uh, Gravita, let me spend a few words about Gravita. Gravita is um, basically the, the Italian effort to answer to the, the search uh, of, of, of um, <coughs> search and analysis of a counterpart of gravitational waves. You see here the, the, the people involved are even more than that, uh, coming from several uh, institutes and places in Italy. And uh, the, these, these are the facilities we, access, we, um, we can access, or because we have a GTO guaranteed time of these facilities, or because uh, there are, uh, we own somehow these facilities, because our, uh, <coughs> have been built by, by Italian groups so, or because there are a collaboration or, and so on. And you see there are quite, quite a lot of, of, uh, of instruments. Okay, what to, to uh, if we want to search, uh, we want to search the, the electromagnetic counterpart, the electromagnetic signature, we first have to, to see the our our, um, uh, the environment of our problem. We focalize on compact object, neutral star, neutral star. Okay, we already we are uh, we already seen one, but we can uh, we can expect um, uh, an electromagnetic signature from neutral star black hole if the tidal tidal force is enough to to remove mass from neutral star. Even in um, um, binary black hole is expected an electromagnetic sig signature if, a, <coughs> if the uh, circumbinary um, um, disk survive until the merging the, of the two objects. And uh, so um, these are important are the distances of the, the, dis the sensitivity of the detector that tells uh, at which distances you can see your source. The, the estimate number of detection taking into account also the, the duty cycle of the detectors. And the localization is very important. The error, the, the error area in uh, that the three detectors here at least three detectors are capable to, to localize the, the source. Um, so we have 10 to 100 square degree. This is the absolute magnitude for binary neutral star, minus 16 magnitude. The alert will come within tens of minutes. And we want to find possible optical counterpart candidates to, to do what? To do, all, to do further spectroscopy follow-up. We saw in, in the Enrico talk, uh, it was important to be fast and follow the, the spectroscopically taking the source. We can uh, use two approach to, to, to search for the, for the electromagnetic counterpart. One is the targeted search and a blind search. In both cases, we need, for an efficient um, search, reference catalog, or even better, images that we compare with to see if some source appears. And uh, would be also nice to have the field characterized from, uh, uh, from uh, um, <coughs> a variability point of view both photometrically and, uh, and uh, uh, astrometrically. Means we want to know in that field all variable objects so we can remove because we are not variable means, uh, again, photometric or moving object because this, uh, this is noise. This is not what we are interested in. Um, and uh, so if we have wide error area in nearby sources, then 
it makes sense to, to do a targeted search. So we, we have a, a catalog of galaxies, and we go observe each single galaxy to see if something happens. That, that, what, that is uh, what, um, what was for GW170817. Um, uh, but then we need a complete gal uh, catalog galaxy, and the best one up to now is this gravitational wave uh, general catalog of white 2011 that is complete up to 40 megaparsec. For absolute magnitude, uh, blue magnitude of minus 15. And uh, um, so there are work try to, to make more complete and deep catalog for that. If we have a small to moderate error area and far sources, then we do for blind search. We cover all the area. Because, because if you have a 20, just to give an example, 20 square degree error area and 200 megaparsec distant volume. So in this volume, we will have 500 galaxies and that are too many. To, fall, to, to, to observe each one individually. Much, it's more, more, much more efficient, efficient to use a telescope with a wide field, uh, wide field of view and image a uh, large portion area that will contain several galaxies. So that's uh, in between, you may have some, uh, some advantage to try to, to <coughs> draw people like. Uh, Hanna 2014 that uh, shows how, how using a catalog can, uh, can make your search more efficient. But these are more or less the, the, the numbers. Um, so for back to Gravita, we have, sorry, we have a, a telescope, a Schmidt telescope, Camp Imperatore, Italy that uh, we can use, it's a, it's a wide field, a 60, uh, it's a 90 centimeter uh, telescope or with a field of view one square degree that can be, that we can use for the search. Uh, we have a, um, in La Silla, the RAM telescope that is a robotic rapid telescope so can move very fast and, and the target, on, on the target uh, is, uh, 10 by 10 arc minutes field of view, but can uh, uh, use uh, simultaneously, simu simultaneously for, uh, for filters. So you will have <coughs> your, uh, your uh, field imaged at, at the same time in several filters. And this is very good, very interesting. Um, and then we have uh, the BST. BST and we have two programs, two companion programs on guaranteed time. This is a large facility at ESO. Uh, and we start observing, searching for counterpart of gravitational waves since uh, 2015. Uh, the VST, just a few words, is, uh, is uh, located in Paranal, it's 2.6 meter, very high quality from a resolution point of view, equipped with a camera with a quarter billion pixel, very high resolution telescope. And uh, so basically we, uh, as soon as the data are imaged, uh, the, 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 um, the observation are ready, they are uh, mirrored to, to, <clears throat> to Garkin, uh, to ISO headquarters. We transfer to Naples, where is the data center for BST data. And uh, uh, we have to process this data. We have to remove the instrumental signature. We have to calibrate from a photometric point of view, astrometric point of view. And within 10 minutes, we have uh, the, these huge uh, images, are a gigabyte size, each image. Um, uh, we have uh, the, the image. The image is ready for further um, <coughs> analysis for the search of the transient. Um, for, the, for the first event, BST was there. We 
we imaged 90 square degree in six epochs. We keep observing the same area in uh, six epochs, yeah? And uh, we cover 29% of the localization probability. Uh, and yeah, you see, if you say the contained probability uh, versus the time since the, the detection, VST was the first, we were very fast, the first uh, big telescope to, to go and search, and, but also was deep. If you, if you plot this against uh, the limit magnitude, VST was very, was, did, we did the very deep observation. So, uh, for the second event, we imaged uh, 60, 72 square degree in six epochs. Uh, and, uh, of course, when you do the observation, then you have to search for variability. So, something that's changed the, the magnitude. And that's not easy job, because, because you have a lot of sources, but you have a lot of uh, variable sources in your field. Thousand. In such area, you have a thousand of uh, variable sources. And uh, to, to do the search, in Gravita, we uh, developed two pipelines, one working on uh, image subtraction, um, developed by Enrico and collaborators, and one on um, that works in the catalog space. It's much faster, I can go less deep. Uh, just to give you some number, for the first event, we started from nine million sources in, in your catalog. After the first search, there were 170,000 variable objects. After cleaning, you end up with 8,000, and 7,000 were known variables uh, object. Uh, there, are, there are some supernovae that were discovered in the field. For the second event, the same, but in this case, uh, not so many variables, but a lot of uh, moving objects, because we were observing near the ecliptic. So you really need to, to have a catalog that tells what is in your field to remove all these objects, because these are spurious for our kind of search. We observe also for the, the, the very important uh, event where Virgo came in and uh, the, the area was reduced about to factor 10, and indeed we were able to cover basically all the area, 80% of the initial biaster map. Uh, these are the, 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 the optical transient that have been found. I go fast. Um, we were also observing clearly the, the, the Kilonova uh, event. Here, I just give the timeline and you see that the first came up, came at 74.54. With this center, we start observation 23.18. Svope uh, found uh, at 23.33. And the other, uh, the, the refinements came up, came at 23.54. Uh, with another center, uh, we basically, with this, uh, since the, the center was moved, we missed, in the first of, we were very fast, but we missed the, 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 the galaxy, NGC 4993, um, because it was, uh, was out of our field, unfortunately. Uh, nevertheless, we imaged the, the, the field, we followed the field in the, in the next days, uh, putting putting points on the faint end of the light curve with VST, right? Uh, so, yeah, you see uh, after uh, uh, 6.4 days, then we imaged again after two weeks, but where uh, the kilonova was not, not observable anymore. We did uh, observation again in January, now when the target was visible again, uh, doing, trying to do very deep observation, but not detection, uh, was not enough to see any, anything. Um, 
What we foresee for O3 and beyond is that with VST, of course, with the other facilities are, are, are there we can use. For VST, we, we foresee to, to spend 80 hours for semesters uh, to follow up uh, gravitational waves. And we need four hours to go over 90 square degrees doing a blind search. So uh, assuming six epochs, so we can follow between 2.5 and 8 events for semester. And, uh, and we will focalize on binary neutral stars and uh, nearby black hole, uh, binary black hole. So the conclusion is, uh, OK, optimization astronomy is started. We are all happy, and that's the reason why we are here. Uh, optical follow-up is very important, and it's very important to, to have, as soon as possible, a refined map. Because uh, for if we have three detectors or more, the area will be small, and if there is a big offset, then uh, we can miss, really we can miss uh, the, our, our source. Uh, Gravita has expertise and facility to, 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 to play, uh, uh, to, to do a good job, and um, okay, we, we plan to use VST for such a number of events. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Lino. Questions for Lino? Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, a telescope just for that. Yeah. How would you, what would you do? Uh, well, as we, uh, we have seen that uh, small telescopes have found first the, the, the optical counterpart. We are speaking about a 70, 80 centimeter telescope because the source was uh, near and bright. No, no, so I'm not, I'm just, no, in general, I'm saying. Uh, if, uh, if, you, if you go in, uh, uh, if you think for the future, then you want to go deep. Uh, and then you need big telescopes. Well, LSST will, will do a search and certainly will characterize the, the sky very well also from the variability point of view. This is very, very important because one of the problems, as you may see, we have a lot of variables. And we, uh, move, uh, va um, variables objects that we have to remove because uh, we want to do the spectroscopic follow-up and we cannot do spectroscopic follow-up of hundreds of sources. So we really need to distill and find the few one very interesting. So that is very important. So big telescope is, uh, is, uh, is important. Um, there are other projects also going on to create the facility. Mm -hmm. So it uh, must be very fast. A telescope fast, fast with f wide field and quite big to go deep. Exactly. I mean, the LCST people are afraid that they will, I mean, they want to, to be very precise on when they make a follow-up and all that because they are afraid to serve then the follow-up and not do their own. So how would you downscale exactly LCST? That's, that's the, probably the, the better defined question. Yeah. The, I think the, the one square degree field of view, I mean, the VST is a, is a an option should be faster in moving and acquire images. But uh, I, I think that would be a telescope. This decides uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a compromise, yeah. I think, in my opinion. Or a combination of different kind of uh, instruments. Yeah. Other question? Not really a question. Uh, I may take an opportunity to give some uh, information about uh, the, um, the gamma ray counterpart. Um, <clears throat> as I NASA is, is, sorry, it's not uh, for you, it's just for the audience. No, no, I okay, take okay, uh, yeah. 30 seconds. Uh, NASA and ESA uh, are making provision to keep uh, alive uh, both integral and, and Fermi, because you understand from the previous talk that the only hope we have 
for a new satellite to see from gamma ray emission is 10 years from now. If ESA in his infinite wisdom will select uh, one of these, uh, Theseus is the best, I think, on the market. But a few days ago, there was uh, an, att an attempt from ESA to keep uh, a life integral for another number of years, and in particular, they have implemented for the first time after 15 years uh, a new operative system, operation system to save uh, uh, fuel. So the fuel will be saved at the level of 70%. So the basic information is that if there is a, a, not a catastrophic failure after 15 years of operation, may, Integral may die any moment as well as Fermi, but if not, uh, ESA can keep the observatory going till 2029 when we re-enter on the Earth, uh, after they have tried to kill the instrument uh, changing the orbit uh, two years ago and burning a 250 kilograms of hydrazine, but now they are doing the other way around. They, they hope to have it. But it is important uh, uh, to show, I think, to, to stress that uh, uh, this uh, machine may die any moment, uh, and they are large machines, because before there was a question about sensitivity or pointing instrument. Of course, we need the non-pointed non instruments. And both Fermi and, uh, and Integral can provide that, uh, that but, but they, they are really at the, at the end of the um, uh, operational life, in principle, because of the law. But they, they can uh, still su survive. So I think we need, uh, uh, to, we have to support a machine for, for a new machine for gamma ray birth. We'd be really worried if in a couple of years we lose all the machine that can do prompt emission and there are very few in the space. And so I really think we have, we have to make as a community if we want to support that science in the future, some, some actions. So sorry for the intrusion, but it's the only opportunity to give this information to you. And this as a new deal has been advertised yesterday. That's why I'm mentioning here. Thank you, Pietro. Yes, it was important mentioning. If there are no other questions for Lino, I think we, we close the session. We thank all the speakers.